Alright, this video is based loosely on the NCI case, that's case 17 out of the Stretcher and Michael book. Uh, the purpose of this case is to actually walk through the cash budgeting process for a company with highly seasonal sales. Uh, NCI, that's Norfolk Cabinet Incorporated, uh, makes custom cabinets and they do the bulk of their business in spring and summer and then business drops off to almost nothing during the, uh, the fall and winter months. Uh, that creates a lot of operational problems and so companies like to smooth out their their business over the course of the year. Uh, so for instance you get retraining costs or worker loss costs. Uh, if the workers only work six months and then get laid off, the really good ones are going to go somewhere else that will pay them for 12 months out of the year. So those uh, one of the ways to lower or, or ameliorate those is to try and spread your construction or your, your, your business over the course of all 12 months. The downside of that is that you're buying stuff that you're not selling, so you got to store inventory, insure the inventory, and it takes up space, etc. So there's a fine line in there between uh, just living with the problem or trying to smooth things out. We're not gonna. We're not trying to do that part of the case. We're really trying to look at the cash budget, and so I made some modifications to what's in the Stretcher and Michael book, and those assumptions are what we're going to work with here. All right. So there's an accompanying workbook has instructions, a template, which a blank template, answers, and uh, an ancillary chart. All right. So we start out pointing out that when a company makes sales, if they sell on credit, they don't actually collect yet. So they have accounts receivable. With this company, if they sell stuff in March, they don't collect but 10% of it in March. The other 90% of it is spaced over the next two months. So March sales collect 10% in March, 30% in April, and 60% in May. The cost of goods sold is similarly uh, different from the accounting numbers. And the accounting numbers match up cost of goods sold to when you make the, the sale. This is a cabinet company. they got to go buy the wood before they make the cabinet. So not only do they purchase it before they make the cabinet, they don't even get invoiced until after they made the cabinet. So they're purchasing stuff and it isn't even cost of goods sold yet. So when they're recording cost of goods sold in a particular month, they bought 70% of it in the prior month. They don't keep stuff laying around, but they project what they're going to need for the upcoming month and then pre-purchase about 70% of it, and then the other 30% would be purchased in the same month. So if they think cost of goods sold for June is $100,000, they buy $70,000 worth of stuff to make cabinets with in May and then buy the other $30,000 in June. There are some other direct costs associated. Now, direct costs are costs that vary directly with the level of activity. Indirect don't vary with the level of activity. And so these other direct costs will be tied to sales. So about, there's a 60-40 split. So about 40% is paid in the same month as the cost was incurred, but there's a delay, so about 60% of this month's uh, other direct costs are paid the following month. All right, so in June, $100,000 expense, $40,000 is actually paid in June, the other $60,000 is paid in July. Now, we have some indirect operating costs, the light bill, the, the rent on the building. Those are paid in the same month that they're incurred, as are the interest expenses. Income taxes are paid every three months. Now, they're incurred as you go, but you don't actually make the payment except every 90 days. So the March payment would include taxes for January, February, and March, or estimated income taxes. All right. They also, since the firm's highly seasonal, they don't want to be fixing equipment or doing capital expenditures while they're trying to make cabinets. So they tend to focus their CapEx in the winter months. All right, so January, February, March, and then you're also looking at a lot of November, December, and you get ramped up in October. So CapEx is done at different times during the year, and you need the money when you do the CapEx. They also plan to CapEx capital expenditure, 
So these are the months they actually expend the money. The company also plans to pay $500,000 in bonuses. They like to keep 10% of monthly sales or $100,000 in cash on hand, whichever is higher. All right, so given this information, project the cash budget for the firm for the year. If you project out where the cash shortfalls are, you can go ahead and make arrangements ahead of time so that uh, there will be cash in the bank account when you actually need it. So turning to the template, here's the income statement up at the top of it. We need the prior two months to be able to, to do sales collections in January. We'll also need January of the following year to know how much of this cost of goods sold we actually bought in uh, December. All right, so for sales, about 10% of January sales are actually paid in Jan or collected in January. About 30% of December sales are actually collected in January. And in November, when we sold $266,000 worth of stuff, we collected some of that in December and some of it in November, but the bulk of it, about 60% of it, we didn't collect until January. All right, so once I have all these numbers in there, if I copy this over, what you can see is the collections peak here in June and July. You go from 180,000 here to 400,000 to almost a million, two million, two million, two million. Then it starts to drop back down. So some months you have a lot of activity, and some months you have very little activity in the collections business. All right, but when you look at this, two million dollars in May you're going to collect about 200,000 of it in May, about 600,000 of it in June, and the bulk of it, 1.2 million in July. So that's the timing of the cash flows. Differ from when we're recording them on the income statement. For the cost of goods sold, if we took, we're going to pre-purchase what we think are going to be the cost of goods sold for February, in March. And the other 30% will be actually collected in February, or spent in February rather. So. All right, so now you could easily do this with better to do this with cell references, so I've shown how to do this mechanically. This is easier. It's going to take whatever that purchase for the next month times next month's cost of goods sold, and whatever that number is times this month's cost of goods sold. Copy that over. And notice that the cost of goods sold starts leaping up in April, but the cash collections on sales, it, we, we, don't, we didn't make enough money to do that. So you already have a huge cash mismatch going on here. The other direct expenses, we're going to actually pay 60% of the prior month's indirect operating costs this month. And we're going to pay 40% of this month's indirect operating costs this month. Let me make sure I have that formula right. Well, I'm using cell references. I actually want to use dollar sign B29 there. Okay. Copy that on out. All right, the other indirect operating costs are paid in the month that they're incurred, as are the interest expenses. And the income taxes is just every three months you pay 
whatever the income taxes were for the three months ending that period. Okay? So, now, so far I'm just pulling down numbers here, but what I want to do is make a difference between a receipt, a positive, and an expenditure. And that's why I want to actually make the negative cash flows negative. And that way, make it easier for me to see what's coming in and what's actually going out. Alright, so those are all positive, negative, negative. Okay. And the negative in there. Alright, so I've got, the other thing I need to do is my capital expenditures, which I can get from uh, this page, just copy those over. And I'm going to have to make those negative too, but it's just easier to do it like this. And then I'll multiply negative 1 times all of them. And I got dividends and bonuses of negative $500,000 in December, which also came from the instructions. All right, so once I get the numbers into there, the uh, spreadsheet is set to calculate all the rest of this as it goes along. And what I see here is I got total cash flows for the month. That summarizes the capital expenditures and the bonuses, the other expenses, the direct and the cost of goods sold. Those are all my expenses. And then I net that against the revenue coming in that I actually collect. Oops. All right, so basically I have negative cash flows up for the first five months and then really positive cash flows and then they go negative again. All right, so when the cash flows are negative, that means I'm going to have to have a source of cash to address this. Now this is the answer section on the book and these have already been calculated because I'm trying to keep the length of the video under 15 minutes. That's your target level of cash. Last month we ended up with 75,000 and the net cash flow is negative 99,000. So that would mean that uh, the 75,000 I would have spent 99,000 which is 24,000 is 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 in the negative unless I borrow. If I borrow 124,205, then that'll actually leave my checkbook with $100,000 in it. And that's where I start the next month with. And then in this month, the net cash flow is negative $569,000. Holy moly. Which means that that 100,000 would get swept away unless I borrowed some. So you can see as you go through here that there's a lot of borrowing in certain months. And the cumulative borrowing, I borrowed 124,000 this month, almost 700,000 this month, a million and a half this month, two million this month, two and a half million. All right, so I've been borrowing as I go and this keeps getting larger. Now, all of a sudden, though, the cash flow starts coming in really positive when I get out past June and July, and then I start repaying the loan. Okay, so I can actually borrow 
for the first eight months, but start paying it back off in, in roughly June, and then at the end of the year, I don't have any. That's the purpose of cash budget. How much money do I need to borrow, and when do I need to borrow it? Notice that about $2.5 million is the highest level of borrowing over the course of the year. So if I'm trying to figure out what limit I need on the corporate credit card, it's got to be at least $2,536,235 because that is my projected high. If you add, say, you add 25% or 25, add 10% on there for a cushion, then you'd want a corporate limit or a, a line of credit limit of roughly $2,750,000.